Welcome back with the preview. Saturday's evening kickoff in the Premier League between Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Pascal, I'll start with the home side. One one draw against Chelsea last time. A decent result, but the Champions League hopes are probably now over. Yeah, I think you look at the table. They certainly are over six points behind Man United in fourth, and the goal difference. You know, they're fourteen goals. You know, there's a fourteen goal difference between the two sides. So, yeah, they're not going to be able to finish in the top four this season. Which, you know, considering how good they were last season, you know, so close to winning the title last season, going out in the Champions League like they did, and not finishing in the top four this season, it has been a disappointing campaign overall. You know, losing Suarez was the big one. You know, that hasn't helped them at all. Sturridge, you know, been out injured for a lot of the season as well. So it's not been the easiest campaign for them, but if you look at that last game specifically, you know, going to Chelsea, who, you know, they've just been crowned champions, it was sort of, you know, it's a sort of party atmosphere at Chelsea, and, you know, especially after they conceded that early goal, John Terry, you know, it'd be disappointing to concede from a set piece like that. It was a good header from Terry, but certainly a disappointing goal to concede. But after that, they sort of weathered the storm in sort of the first 15, 20 minutes. Chelsea, you know, could have maybe doubled their advantage, but they managed to hold them at one and then. You know, Gerard on his last trip to Stamford Bridge, you know, he gets that equaliser. It's a good header from him. I think poor from Chelsea yeah. just to let him, you know, pull away to the back post like he did. But decent goal from them. And in, in, the, in the second half, they certainly, you know, they looked like the side out of the two. I mean, neither side had that many clear cut chances. But I think out of the two, Liverpool did look the more dangerous side. I think Coutinho, you know, he had a good game. I think Lalana had his moments. I think Lalana was taken off sort of around the sort of 65th minute. And I was quite surprised to see that because he had quite a bright start to the second half and he was looking quite dangerous. He had his moments. You know, Sterling had the odd thing here and there. But. They didn't quite create enough clear-cut chances, and the chances that did come there, I think Coutinho had the main one where he hit the side netting from a you know good cut back. But so it was a decent performance from them. Obviously, getting a point at Stamford Bridge. You know, I think the way they played in the second half, they'd be sort of a bit annoyed they couldn't win there. But you know, no no teams won in the league at Stamford Bridge this season. So you know, we know how hard Chelsea are to break down there. So one all draws okay, but in terms of their top four hopes, they did they did have to win the game and they couldn't do it in the end. So yeah, disappointing. You know. You know, sort of outcome in the sense that they can't really reach the top four now. Mm, I don't think they have too many complaints not not finishing top four. I mean, recently only won two of the last seven in the league, and that's involved. I think the game where they lost at Hull was a big one, wasn't it? Manchester United obviously lost their last three before beating Palace, and Liverpool would have watched United win at Palace in the Saturday night kickoff, and that would have really hurt them, wouldn't it? Because they'd have known that, oh, you know, we have to win here if we get a draw, it's probably over. Like you say, can you can you really see it turning around a 14 goal goal difference? It doesn't happen, does it? Obviously, mathematically, you'll say, you know, of course we can we can do this, but it is over. Winning last, they obviously drew at West Brom as well, didn't they? During that, lost at Hull, and those two results really hurt. I mean, like you say, going to Chelsea and getting a point is a really good result. You know, not too many teams get there. Manchester United have obviously been beaten there recently, so really important. I think what happens this summer with a few of their players will be interesting. Obviously, Sterling's a big one. Wants that big new contract. Has he really done enough to deserve it? You know, I think he scored. He's got seven in the league this season. You know, Gerrard's the top scorer of eight, but seven in the league. And you look at Jordan Ibe as well. You know, he wants a new contract. He, he might be turning it down. So if they end up losing both of those players, you can imagine Chelsea, City. You know, teams like that will be sniffing around those two players. And if, if Liverpool lose both of them, you just wonder. You know, it would be a really big blow, wouldn't it, for the clubs to have these really good young talents and to lose them both? So it's a big summer for Liverpool. Certainly, I think you know, last summer, you know, they they got into the Champions League. They did lose Suarez, but then. Look at the signings they made. They didn't quite, you know, do enough to sort of. And obviously, losing the Champions League spot like they have now is going to be even harder to attract the sort of talent they want because if they're only in the Europa League, you know, they're going to struggle with that. But back to this game, and certainly the main talking point about it is Steven Gerrard's last home game, last game at Anfield. So it's going to be, you know, there's going to be so many tributes in the crowd. You know, he has been arguably the club's greatest ever player. I think some people some might say, you know, Kenny Dalglish was the club's greatest ever player, but. You know, Gerard, he's been a servant to the club. You know, after the Chelsea game, you know, there's, there was sort of talk running up to the game. You know, you know, Mourinho said, "I tried to sign Gerard three times at sort of various clubs that Mourinho managed." And you know, Gerard was asked about it in his post-game interview, and he said, "You know, I, I, I would have signed for Mourinho had it had I not just loved Liverpool as much as I do." You know, he, and that sort of thing. You know, the fans they do love him. You know, arguably perhaps the greatest centre midfielder the Premier League's ever seen, given his consistency, the goals he scored, and all that. But Certainly, it's odd to see him as the top scorer this season. I mean, for me personally, a lot of the games I've watched this season, Gerard has it's not been a happy campaign for him. Sort of his last campaign. You look at it and maybe think, should he have left last summer? The way it's sort of gone, because I watched a lot of games and I think you know he just doesn't look anywhere near his sort of the player he was maybe even two years ago, as recently as that. And certainly, you know, he scored a few goals, eight goals. It's surprising that that is the you know the top scorer for them in the league this season, but. It, you know that all of that can be discounted, and certainly for this game, you know, against Palace, who have got nothing to play for, Liverpool, you know, they they should certainly, you know, pull out all the stops for him. He's been an absolute club legend, and yeah, it'll be disappointing to see him go. But I think you know, it's certainly the right time for him to leave because, like I said, I just don't think he's been anywhere near his best this year. Mm. 
Yes, for certain. Like you mentioned, they'll be keen to get back to to, to get back to winning ways against Palace, and Palace have not been in good form, have they? You know, it's been since Pardew's gone in, he's done he's done a decent job. Lost the last four in the league now. Last time out against Manchester United, obviously tough welcome United, who had lost three in a, three in a row. Obviously going into that game as well, and we're keen to get to winning ways. And the early on, obviously the first goal came from the penalty spot. And I think people were arguing that, but. You look at Scott Down, he, do, he does throw his arm up. I think when you when you can look in at whether something's a penalty, you have to look at whether a player is trying to make himself bigger to stop the ball. And I think he, he does lean down and sort of throw his arm out. So I don't think you have too many complaints. And Matter sticks it away. Not too much happened in the first half after that. But Palace started the second half very brightly. Jason Punch and came on and got, got the got the free kick into the top corner. Not sure what David Lynn's doing. He's almost you know he's he's not got his head out of the way. He's almost moved it out of the way, which is very bizarre to see. But good free kick and then. Obviously, Palace are on the front foot, and Glenn Murray had that amazing chance to need to score, and David De Gea just somehow throws a hand out. You know, I'm not too sure he made that save, and obviously that would have been a big blow to Palace at that stage. And then United keen pushing forward, you know, needed to get the win to, to ease the pressure. Obviously, Liverpool close behind them, and the goal itself maybe a touch fortunate. Falcao looks like he does push. I think it was Delaney into into Spironi, and sort of Spironi then in no man's land of Fellaini heads it home at the far post. So to get the, to lose it again at home was he been disappointing and like I say it's got it's gone sort of a bit sour for them and if they end up losing here, they play Swansea at home last game of the season, you know, Swansea we know they're absolutely flying. So if they they could end up sort of losing the last six games of the season and that would just put a sour note on what has been a good season. Yeah, certainly since Pardew came in they did do fantastically, didn't they, sort of about two, three months, but yeah, you look at the table now, they're eight points clear, so they are they are safe, but I mean, the interesting thing for me is just how bad they've been at home. You know, you look at their home record all season, where they are on the table, you know, 12th, eight points clear, so that's all right. But when you compare sort of the home and away tables, they're 19th in the home table, you know, 10 defeats at home this season. We often talk about, you know, Selhurst Park is, you know, in terms of in terms of uh, atmosphere per person, you know, per, per fan in the crowd, it's always great there. It's always kind mm-hmm. of rocking, but they, they, yeah, they've lost 10 games, which is, you know, one more than sort of Hull have lost at home. They're the only side in double figures for losses at home, so... That's disappointing for them. Only Burnley have got a worse home record. Burnley obviously been relegated, but when you compare that to the away table, they're seventh in the away table. You know, six wins away from home, which is the same as Man United, and you know, so they've, they've done really well away from home. And it's it's surprising that their home form has been that but bad because you know, they've had some impressive home results this season. You know, they've beaten City at home, they've beaten Liverpool at home, they've beaten Spurs at home this season. So you, when they beat sides like that at Selhurst, it's quite impressive. But they've lost some poor games as well. You know, recently lost to West Brom, recently lost to Hull at home as well. So. I think certainly they can be very pleased with the way they've performed on the road this season, but Pardew will certainly look at their home record and think, right, that's an area we've got to improve on next season. We should be winning a lot more games at home and certainly not losing as many. To mm. lose 10 times at home, very disappointing. Very disappointing. I'd say Palace are decent on the road, but Liverpool only lost three of their 18 home league games this season, so they've been decent at home you know, overall. Into this game is the favourites, obviously, Liverpool. Do you back them to get all three points? I think you have to because there's going to be the whole, you know, side, well, the Gerrards, he's, he's the main talking point of the game. Gerrards' last home game, I think Palace. Well, certainly, you know, Pardew would say, look, go and crash the party, go, I still want to win this game. But I think Liverpool, you know, you've got to back them because they did play pretty well at Chelsea last mm-hmm. week. So I think they're going to win this one 3 0 quite comfortably. 3 0 quite comfortably, yeah. I think the interesting thing with Pardew, you mentioned their away form. I think they're set up to play away from home, aren't they? Obviously, Balassi and Zaha, they get a lot of time on the counter away from home, which is obviously important, you know, whereas at home you have to break teams down. So it'd be interesting. I can see Liverpool winning. I don't think quite as comfortable as that. I'd say Palace will cause some problems, but I think Liverpool will just nick this 2 1. So can both see Liverpool picking up all three points in this one. Thanks for joining us.